Alright guys, Dominic here for Kick Guru, and today we are looking at a pretty interesting monitor. This is the AOC U28G2XU, and the reason I'm interested in this one is because, at least as far as I can tell, it is the cheapest 4K 144Hz monitor on the market right now. Retailing for £589 on Amazon UK, it's not exactly a budget panel, but like we said, I've not been able to find one at the same resolution and refresh rate that is less expensive. Other than that 4K 144Hz spec then, it's sporting a 28 inch IPS panel with display HDR 400 certification, as well as a claimed three millisecond gray to gray response time. So let's dive in and find out just how good it really is. Kicking off with a look at the design then, the U28 G2XU looks pretty similar to other AOC G2 series monitors we have reviewed in the past. That means it's made of mostly black plastic with a few red accents thrown in for good measure. Being completely honest, I don't think it's the cleanest looking monitor out there, but once it's on the desk, you really do get used to it. And also it does have pretty slim bezels with just a slightly thicker chin. The V-shaped base on the stand is also relatively compact as these things go and credit to AOC here you actually get a full range of ergonomic adjustments from this stand. That means we have 130mm of height adjust, there's 32 degrees of swivel in both directions, there's tilt from minus 5 to 21.5 degrees and even a 180 degree pivot is supported so we really can't complain. One thing I do want to complain about though is the fact that this monitor is just a bit wobbly. I notice this most when touching it and pressing it and while you obviously won't be doing it that much, when navigating the OSD for instance, I did notice there was a fair amount of side to side play so it's not the most stable. There is support for VESA 100 mounting brackets though so you can swap out the included stand if you want to. As for the ports then, we'll start with the USB hub. So there's one USB upstream, but then you actually get four USB 3.2 Gen 1 downstream ports, and the yellow one is an always on port. Display connectors meanwhile consist of two DisplayPort 1.4 and two HDMI ports. The kicker is these are HDMI 2.0 ports rather than 2.1, which really is one key area where costs have been cut. PC users need not worry about this as 4K 144Hz is very possible over display ports with a helping hand from display stream compression. But if you wanted a single screen to use with both PC and a PlayStation 5 or Xbox Series X, then the lack of HDMI 2.1 could well be a limitation. Moving on though, it's definitely worth touching on the OSD. This is navigated by five buttons on the bottom edge of the display. And I have to say, this gets very frustrating very quickly. The OSD itself is fine, it's not really lacking anything, it doesn't look the best, but I really can't complain there. But what is just more frustrating is having to use those five small buttons to get around the OSD. Honestly, I lost count of how many times I accidentally powered off this monitor when just trying to enable or disable a different setting. For me, a four-way joystick would just be absolutely miles better. And again, this is another area where I think costs have been cut. Now, in fairness to AOC, they do offer their iMenu and G-Menu Windows-based OSD apps, which give some degree of control over the OSD. However, neither piece of software is particularly amazing. And while you can change profiles or tweak brightness without using the physical OSD, certain things can only be adjusted in the OSD itself, which brings us back to those horrible five small buttons. That is really it for the design though, so let's move on to talk about the screen itself and what it's actually like to use on a day-to-day -day basis. First of all, as an IPS panel, we expect good strong colours and very good viewing angles and I have to say that is exactly what we get here. Out of the box though, I did notice that brightness wasn't the best. It defaulted to a 50% setting but honestly, 
I bumped this up to at least 80% and more often than not, I kept it at full whack. So it doesn't look like the brightest screen, but more on that in a moment. Firing up the Spider-X colorimeter then, we will start with gamut coverage. Here we get 98% sRGB reporting, 82% Adobe RGB, and 86% coverage of the DCI P3 space. It is decent enough for a gaming display, but we have seen better. Back to the brightness though, and this is an area where the U28 G2XU really isn't so hot. It peaked at just under 285 nits, which is okay in fairness, especially if you're using it in a semi-dark or darkened room, but there were a few times I found myself wanting a bit more for it when I had the curtains flung wide open and there was a fair amount of sunlight coming into the room. Contrast, meanwhile, reported at 9, 10 to 1, so that's pretty typical of IPS technology, but it was good to see the Y point was actually very close to the 6500K ideal, hitting 6600K out of the box. And then for color accuracy, here we measured an average delta E of 1.17 and a maximum of just 2.27, so color representation is very good. Noted we have seen better, but honestly, for a screen that is only aimed at gamers, this is still a fantastic result. Let's talk gaming then, as this is probably the most important area for you if you are considering this screen. And I have to say, I was not disappointed. First of all, the 4K resolution over the 28 inch panel size really does give an excellent amount of detail. It really is, I would say, a game changer compared to using a 1440p resolution over the same screen size. Response times are also really good and probably a bit better than I was expecting. For most people, I would recommend using the weak overdrive setting as this eliminated almost all of the visible ghosting and there was no overshoot that I could see. There is also the medium overdrive setting which some people may want to consider. This did introduce a touch more overshoot which I found myself noticing on a couple of occasions, but you can try it out and see what you think. I would definitely avoid using the strong or boost modes though as these have overshoot like crazy and it just looks really bad. Using my preferred weak overdrive setting though, I had a great time playing Splitgate and Call of Duty. Granted, it's not going to be absolutely as fast as, say, a 1440p 240Hz display, but I think for the vast majority of gamers out there, the 144Hz refresh rate as well as the response times on offer are going to be more than fast enough. Additionally, like we already mentioned, the extra level of detail really comes into its own when playing story-driven games like RPGs, that kind of thing, where speed isn't necessarily a top priority to begin with. Still on the topic of speed, input latency is another strong area for the U28 G2XU. We test using NVIDIA's LDAT tool, and while we are still building up our list of comparison data, we can see that this AOC screen delivered effectively the same end-to-end -end system latency as the EVE Spectrum we recently reviewed, so that is a great result. Subjectively speaking as well, I really didn't notice any input delay when using a mouse and keyboard, so for me, I can have zero complaints. One thing I did notice though, was a couple of areas of visible backlight bleed. This will vary from panel to panel, but the top right edge, as well as a couple of points in the top left corner, did exhibit some noticeable bleed. Now, to be clear, this did not bother me at all while gaming, but I did actually notice it a couple of times when opening Chrome, where I use dark mode, for instance. So it's just something to note. Really not a terrible thing, but definitely something to be aware of. Viewing angles, however, I really have to say these were top notch. I really noticed absolutely minimal color shift when moving around the display. And I reckon you could comfortably get three people around this monitor and it would look almost exactly the same as if they were sat dead center. So again, Another area where I've been really impressed and can have no complaints at all. Moving on then, I will briefly touch on HDR performance, but only really to say that I just don't consider this a proper HDR monitor. While it does have VESA Display HDR 400 certification, there's no local dimming and you just do not get the required amount of brightness or contrast for a proper HDR experience. 
Without those two things, if you do enable HDR in game, it's just gonna look very flat. So if HDR is a priority for you, then I wouldn't really recommend this monitor. But then at the same time, I also won't hold it too strongly against the U28 G2XU, as monitors that do give a proper HDR experience are generally much more expensive. And like I already said, the SDR experience is really good. As for Adaptive Sync as well, if you head over to the U28 G2XU's product page on AOC's website, we can see here there's this large piece of text which says Free Sync Premium and G Sync Compatible. To be honest, this is probably a little bit naughty on AOC's behalf, as this monitor isn't officially G Sync compatible in the sense that it hasn't been certified by Nvidia. However, there is a difference between G Sync compatible with an uppercase C and G Sync compatible with a lowercase C in the sense that while it isn't officially certified, I did all of my testing with G Sync enabled using an RTX 3090 and I had absolutely no issues at all. So if you do have an Nvidia GPU, G Sync should be absolutely fine. So then, that is it for our review of the AOC U28 G2XU. Priced at £589 here in the UK, as far as I can tell, this is the cheapest 4K 144Hz monitor on the market right now, and for many people, it will be worth buying. Probably the most important thing to know is that the IPS panel used is of very good quality. Color accuracy is great, the response times are impressive, and honestly, it doesn't really have any major weaknesses. Of course, certain corners had to be cut to reach the price point, and chief among these is HDMI 2.1. Simply put, it is just not here, so if you wanted an HDMI 2.1 monitor to use with a new console, this screen does not tick that box. Additionally, the OSD system is just so annoying, I would have much preferred to see a joystick used instead of the five buttons on the bottom edge. While I wouldn't consider this monitor a viable option for really any sort of HDR content either. Overall though, if you're a PC gamer and you're going to use DisplayPort anyway, assuming you can look past the annoying OSD and you're not fussed about the lackluster HDR, honestly I do think this is a really good option like we said, it does have a high quality IPS panel and at the price point, it's the most affordable 4K 144Hz screen I can find. So for that reason alone, it is definitely worth looking at. That is going to do it for this review then guys. I'm Dominic for Kit Guru. If you liked it, please do toss me a thumbs up and as always, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. While you're there, please do ding that notification bell if you haven't already. And why not come chat with us over on our Discord server, which is linked in the description. Also in the description, you can find a link to our merch store where you can pick up a cool t-shirt like the one I'm wearing here. And you could even consider backing us on Patreon, where you can see some of our content early and get access to exclusive giveaways. Until then though, guys, I'm Dominic Forkit Guru, and I'll see you in the next video.